This is Exerscribe Radio, and you're listening to Kusha Karvandi. On today's podcast, I interview Dave Aston from WhyAmIUnhealthy.com. In this episode, Dave shares his insights from his background as a personal trainer, as well as insights from his book, Why You're Unhealthy and What to Do About It. We're here on Exerscribe Radio with David Aston from WhyAmIUnhealthy.com. Welcome. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me, Kisha. So, uh, so David, just to get started, why don't you give the audience a little bit of a you know brief bio and background about you and what you're working on? Whew, all right, I'll try to keep this brief. Um, well, like <laughs> you said, I'm the, the founder of Why Am I Healthy, and uh, we're all about natural health and natural living, and, and basically maximizing the p- potential and productivity of every single task that we uh, that we basically do every single day throughout our lives. Uh, and it all starts for us with uh, what we eat. Um, basically, I went to England last year, and I moved in with a buddy of mine who's a, a well-known entrepreneur and uh, a very, very healthy guy on paper. But he actually got sick in Africa. Um, they injected him with all sorts of stuff. It ruined his health. And basically, he was bedridden for a couple months. I uh, went out there, stayed off for three months. We completely changed his diet. We we changed his exercise regimen based off everything that we have been teaching with Why Am I Healthy? And the guy is off all antibiotics. He's off of all supplements. Um, he sleeps like a baby. Uh, hasn't been back to the doctor in over a year now. And this was this was about 13 months ago was the last time he went to the doctors. Um, so basically, we, we took everything that we, we already knew, applied it to this guy. Um, any changes that we need to make to this real life case study, we, we started talking about it on the blog and basically traffic blew up and uh, now I'm known as one of the health guys on the internet. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So what books are you currently reading on, uh, on health and fitness or what blogs do you like to follow? Ooh, man, there's a lot of good ones. Um, let's see right now what I'm reading on health. I just started a new book. It's called The Brain That Changes Itself. And Oh, that's a really uh, have, good book. Yeah, I like that one about have, have neuroplasticity. That. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's that's something I've really been been getting excited about and looking into a little bit more and and uh, basically trying to change my own awareness with a lot of the things that I do and uh, I'm applying some of the techniques that we're learning in that. Um, and uh, what was the other part of the question? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what kind of blogs do you like to follow? Are there specific oh, uh, blogs that you follow? Honestly, I, I like I like. Uh, <sighs> I like the extra scribe blog. I got to keep it real with you. It's pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, and it's it's honestly, man. There's there's so many out there. Um, what I like to do now is I've I've to be quite honest, I've turned away from a lot of the blogs and I'm I'm reading more of the science journals and the the uh, the I guess research websites. It's a little bit more sciencey stuff and less less entertainment. Um, <sighs> Basically, I only, I'm only looking into the case studies now and stuff that's either been proven or disproven um, just so I can deliver the best, the best quality of information to my readers on why I'm unhealthy. Uh, a lot of times with the blogs, you get, you get a lot of people that are going to switch things around or might add uh, a couple of things to, to what, they're, what they're saying to people that aren't true necessarily uh, just for shock value. And I appreciate that and I get that you, know, you, want, you want people to click your stuff and, and read your blog, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you're – you are making an impact on the collective consciousness of everybody in the world because of the reach of the internet and social media and stuff. So I got to be very careful about, about the information that I take in, um, and how I'm, how I'm educating myself in order to better educate my readers and offer them, you know, the opportunity to, to ultimately help themselves and make more of, uh, informed skepticisms rather than, uh, informed decisions, uh, in this day and age. You know, I really so. like that you're doing that because even people like, uh, like Dave Asprey, who, who I really like and respect, it seems like they uh, they just really go and cherry pick the things that they seem to like or believe in from stuff they've read online, and they go and regurgitate it. And then his you know hundreds of thousands or millions of followers believe that to be fact, when in fact you know a lot of what he's talking about with the bulletproof diet, intermittent fasting, you know, uh, extreme amounts of lipid uh, consumption via via butter coffee, it's not necessarily right for everybody. And uh, and we know that you know without really doing the genetic testing and the labs to to figure out what's right for that individual, a lot of it is um, is really just generalized information that that could be inappropriate for uh, the the larger population. So I like the fact that you're looking at uh, you know something that is more scientific, well researched, well documented, and hopefully the highest level of truth versus um, just another blog that that might have um, 
you know, be misinformed or, or have the wrong information for um, for the individual. And right, right. And there's nothing, you know, nothing against Dave Ashby because he's, at the end of the day, he's a brilliant marketer. And that's the thing is his marketing is so good that he presents the information that it is fact. But if, if people will just take a second to realize what he's saying, he's saying, this is what works for me. This is this is what I did. And people don't really pay much mind to that. And, you know, they take it like this is this is gold. Dave Ashby's word is truth or, or whomever with, you know, has the brilliant marketing and stuff. But, yeah, no, I think it's very important that we uh, we do our due, due diligence, each and every one of us as responsibility to our own selves to uh, – to really kind of sift through the bullshit and see what's what's real and what works for you, you know. Listen to your body. Your, your body already knows what's up. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of the you know the mainstream certifications out there? Like you know, like a lot of the, the a lot of uh, consumers they follow the advice of your typical personal trainer who has you know National Academy of Sports Medicine certifications or or uh, ACE or NCSF or something of that nature. What's your thoughts on that stuff? You know, I think it's great. I think, you know, if you're going to go and you're going to trust somebody to, uh, to improve your fitness and your health to an extent, I should say, help you improve that, you know, you, you want to make sure that they've at least brushed up on some of the information. But again, at the end of the day, you know, I can go into, to, you know, my big box gym down the street and I'll watch a lot of the trainers themselves in there, you know, executing really horrible form. Um, doing workouts that, in my opinion, are a waste of time. They'll be in there, you know, two hours and work out their, their arms for two hours. And, you know, to me, that's, that's really interesting. You know, somebody has all these certifications will go in there and basically waste his time. Why not, you know, engage the full body? Why don't you, you spend, you know, just an hour or 30 minutes, you know, do a full body exercise. Your arms are going to be hit. Your legs are going to be hit. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of times it comes back and I point out, I'm not, married to any one particular type of training or any paradigm for health and fitness. But, you know, if you look at the CrossFit guys and everybody's like, man, why are the CrossFit guys so shredded? You know, it's the type of exercising that they're doing. It's the intensity that they're keeping and it's, it's the amount of muscle fibers that they're engaging in any given workout. And I think a lot of times, you know, you can have all the certifications in the world, but, but guys and their egos will uh, be guys and their egos. You know, they go in there and you're going to hit chest and bench and you're going to hit arms every single day just to be super pumped, but you know, a lot of these dudes won't wear shorts because uh, you know they got chicken legs. They're not. They're not. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't feel like people are leading by example. Even the ones that do have all these 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 major certifications, and there's, and I think it's great. I think you should you should educate yourself and, and get as many certifications as you can if you feel like you're actually benefiting that. Don't just do it to have the piece of paper so you can go into Gold's gym and say, "Hey, I can be a personal trainer. Uh, you need anybody?" No, that's that's weak, man. If you're trying to hustle and make money, there's other ways to go about that without jeopardizing the health and fitness and putting other people at risk in the process. You know, I, I definitely don't give somebody credit. It's, I'm not going to I'm not going to trust somebody to be an expert just because he has a bunch of certifications. I'm going to trust somebody to be an expert because his actions are going to match his words and he's going to be able to to articulate and translate, you know, pertinent information to to my current physical situation whether it's at the gym or around the field training, you know, what have you. I, I I trust the character of the individual before I trust the certifications, I guess. Yeah, you know, to me it seems like such a catch 22 because there's a there's a lot of people out there who have tons of certifications but they don't really practice what they preach or they, they don't seem to really ever get any results with their clients. Uh, and then on the other end, you get all these, all these individuals who are like really gym members first. And then as they get good results for themselves, they turn into this like online personal training, you know, personality and, uh, and, and they call themselves a trainer and a coach or whatever. And, and they start, you know, selling personal training online. So I, I see that a lot. And those people have no credentials. So it's kind of this catch 22, but for me, I'm kind of like you where I, I look at number one, you know, how do you apply the knowledge? You know, applied knowledge is more important than uh, what knowledge you have floating around in that brain of yours. It's, it's about what you can understand and apply to the individual. And then uh, the second part of it too is actually practicing that knowledge. Because if you're not practicing it, then you're you're missing out on the other fifty percent of personal training, which is being a good coach. And to be a good coach, you have to practice what you preach. You can't just you know tell people what to do and not not really show it because that just creates a lot of duplicity of character. Um, so I'm with you 100. percent Yeah, you know, absolutely, man. I think I think it's it's hilarious when I go to the gym and I haven't seen a guy in there. I'm like, hey, you know, where you been? And oh, you know, I've been sick or I had the flu or I just wasn't feeling well, so I couldn't make it in. Oh, that's interesting. So you're in here preaching fitness, but you're not actually healthy. You're, you're still eating like shit. You're not sleeping enough. You're you're probably dehydrated. Um, that's crazy. You know, I, I can say these things because I haven't been sick in 
years. I, I can't remember the last time I've been sick. It might be a decade. I couldn't tell you. And it's because, you know, I focus on the little things. You know, I didn't need a bunch of certifications to realize that I needed to get more sleep. I didn't need a bunch of certifications to realize that I needed to pee clear every day in order for me to know that I'm hydrated. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's crazy. I think people definitely need to start working on practicing what they preach. And then next time you go to your gym, you guys that are listening to this, and you look at your personal trainers, you know, aside from the big arms and the big chest, you know, see what their gut's looking like. See what the quality of their skin and their hair is looking like. Look at their fingernails if you get close enough to them. And, and really observe and, and see if those people look healthy. And that's who you want to be taking your, your, your health and fitness advice from. And I think you guys are going to be surprised. Yeah, you know, it seems like the personal training industry is predominantly, um, you know, men. And it's mainly, uh, you know, I'd say probably most gyms are probably two-thirds uh, male trainers, maybe one-third female. And the male trainers that do best are the ones that tend to look the best. But the, the shame of the reality is, like you said, a lot of these guys might look like they're in good shape, but they're actually not healthy on the inside. You know, their, their gut flora is all off because they're, you know, they're popping pills and taking all kinds of, you know, BCAAs with artificial ingredients and they're using, you know, all kinds of uh, testosterone boosters or steroids, whatever it may be to look the part. And to me, it's like, if you're going to cheat your way to that look, that, that's not really the, uh, the solution. You know, you got to really, uh, a lot of people look for shortcuts inherently, and I think that's a mistake. So I, it, I think, like you said, you got to really um, you know, read between the lines and look for that, that coach or that trainer that actually really does embody all the characteristics and traits of, uh, of the health that you aspire to. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the thing. You know, we're all looking for instant gratification. It's human nature. We we want results now. You know, and that's part of being in the moment. But the thing to remind yourself is, how long did it take you to get to that point? Did it take you, you know, two days to get really unhealthy, out of shape, tired, sick, fat, or did it take you, you know, a few weeks, a few months, a couple years? You know, any trainer, any any health or fitness guru that tells you it's gonna be easy. Oh, I'm gonna get you the buns of steel, and it's only gonna take ten days, or I'm gonna get you amazing cheese grater abs in, in, in 21 days. It's all bullshit. You know, anybody that tells you it's going to happen overnight or it's really, really easy is lying through their teeth and probably just wants something from you. And that something is likely money. Really, really do your due diligence and recognize what people are saying to you. You know, most of us, actually, I heard something that was interesting. They said, unless you had like an actual major, you know, mental deficiency, you know, upon birth, everybody's capable of getting a PhD. You know what I mean? We're all capable of great things. I'm not saying that that's, that's the ultimate measure of success. I'm just trying to gauge it into a, a you know, a, a parable that everybody can relate to. It's, it's, we all inherently know right from wrong to an extent. If somebody's coming up and telling you something's going to be extremely easy and you're not going to have to really work that hard for it, when you know in your heart you're going to, that should be a red flag right there. And I think you're going to find that with a lot of, unfortunately, you, you will find that with a lot of the big, big gym personal trainers, um, ultimately they're, they're in there for work. They're in there to, to sell you on fitness, to sell you on the idea of looking like them. Uh, ideally, hopefully they look well. Um, but yeah, it, it's, you know, put in, put in the effort. The only secret that I've, I've truly acknowledged that the biggest secret for health fitness, being good at anything is consistency. And, and it really, it only comes down to consistency with whether or not it's uh, your sleep cycles, your eating cycles, your, your, you're going to the gym, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to do you know, better in school, better in work. It's, it's your consistency. Remain consistent at doing great things, holding yourself to a higher quality of being. And, and ultimately, I, I don't see how everybody can't be healthy, happy, and strong if, if they maintain that, that, that type of focused mindset, you know? Exactly. You know, I'm really a big fan of, of some of these more exotic certifications that aren't necessarily accredited, uh, like your Precision Nutrition and, uh, and mainly Z Health Performance Solutions, which is all based on, you know, uh, biohacking and, and brain hacks. And uh, that seems to be a growing trend, this whole concept of biohacking. Have you, have you heard of biohacking? I have. I have. It's, uh, it's something that I've been looking into a little bit more lately, and it's definitely getting popular. And those, those types of certifications and those types of classes that you just met, like the Z Health, uh, which you just mentioned, um, now that stuff really piques my interest, and that's some really, really cool state-of-the-art stuff that I think is honestly going to change the way, you know, not just the way you and I as, as trainers and, and, and coaches, but the way everybody, you know, in the world is going to view health and fitness. It's, it's really, I think it's, it's where we're supposed to be in 2014. I think that, that the information that they're delivering and, and the way that they're delivering it is, is amazing. Like, like what was that, um, 
I believe you were showing me one of the Z Health drills. It was a stretching drill, and you, you did like one stretch. You had people touch their toes, and all of a sudden the range of motion and everybody in the room was was better than it had been in 20 years. It was it was amazing, and that was you know something that everybody could do you know when they wake up first thing in the morning. And that's that's not necessarily something that's practiced and preached because those types of things do. In, in many instances, get you the instant gratification. And if everybody's getting the instant gratification with the health and fitness, a lot of people are going out of business. Exactly. So you, you know, really there's got so much delayed through. gratification. Oh. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no one thinks about how your eyes and vision plays a role in their health and fitness and how that could lead to better fat metabolism or make them stronger. Uh, same with joint mobility drills. People are stuck in the dogma of foam rolling, static stretching, you know, your typical three sets of 10 of the machines or or lifting weights in a certain way, or, or doing cardio to lose weight. People are stuck with these old habits and these old uh, concepts of health and fitness, all of that soon to be disrupted. And the cool thing about Z-Health, it seems like, is that you know they say that the research out there that the universities do is 15 years ahead of the industry. And the cool thing is that Dr. Cobb and Z-Health have this direct access to the research because they pay a ton of money to get it before anyone else. So they're, you know, what he says is they're theoretically, they're like 10 or 15 years ahead of the industry. So it's so cool to see what this cutting edge really looks like and uh, and how fast it gets results for people. Because I had, like you said, I got in front of a room of 80 people and I had everyone do a uh, an assessment to establish a baseline first where they did a toe touch. I had them do a simple vision drill, just eye circles. And then I had them reassess and people who hadn't touched their toes in 20 years were touching their toes. So it was really cool to see that, you know, that drastic shift uh, in their mindset immediately. You saw all these light bulbs going off. People were freaking out. Right. What, what was really cool about that is all those people are going to take that information and they're going to tell their friends. So you're going to have, you know, just by word of mouth, you know, you're going to have people that are getting healthier, happier, and stronger. And that in itself is going to evolve and probably open the doors and, and reveal other things that we may not have known about each other uh, as, as humans. Um, which is really, really cool to see kind of where we're going. I think it's, it's time for uh, an evolution as a people, and I think a lot of that is coming down to, to obviously, it's, it's a mental type of thing, but it, a lot of it comes down to our health and, and our well-being. And I think the more that we start to improve that, uh, I think we're going to notice some really, really big positive changes um, as a society. It's going to be cool, man. Who would you say the most, uh, the, I would say, the, you know, who would you say the biggest inspirations are uh, in health and fitness for you? Ooh, for me, um, it's a tough one, man. I definitely, somebody that I've really looked up to and admired for a long time would be Elliot Hulse. Um, I know a lot of, a lot of times his videos are, are less geared towards fitness anymore, but, uh, I definitely think that he comes from a truly, he takes a truly holistic approach to life. He won't necessarily agree with that because he like, like myself won't identify with any particular paradigm, um, of being, but, but the guy really does. Uh, seem to practice what he preaches and, and, and spits more than just you know the lifting weights. He's, he's about you know staying hydrated, getting enough sleep, having healthy social relationships, which has a major major impact on on your actual physical health, um, not just your mental and spiritual well being, but your actual physical well being. You know, it's it's really important to be social and get out there and feel the energy of your peers and and really kind of raise the vibration in the room because that that is going to translate uh, to how you how you think and if you're thinking down all the time if you're, if you're feeling shitty if you you know you're just loathing every day what, what makes you think you're gonna get up and push yourself to get to the gym and even if you got to the gym how are you gonna if you're sitting there moping around and feeling sorry for yourself you're not gonna work hard you're not gonna see results you're not gonna be as motivated to go uh you know have the brown rice and chicken breast that you know you'd rather just stop at mcdonald's i don't know i, th I think uh i definitely think that the 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 mental uh well-being of of everybody uh it's really important. That's something that I really liked about Elliot Hulse because he seems to uh, really identify that and, and, and trying to make a difference. I really like that. And, and somebody else that I've really been following for a while is um, uh, what's what's the underground wellness. I like I like I do really like Sean's. Uh, I like his podcast and I like the stuff that he puts out. I think uh, a lot of the information that, he, that he's putting out there is reaching a lot of people and it's helping a lot of people. And I think that's pretty cool because he's doing it. Uh, you know in a more modern way with, with the blogs and it's kind of like what you and I are trying to do, getting information out there. And I, I definitely respect that and I admire people that are getting out there and doing, doing big things with it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. It seems that a lot of people in the internet marketing space, you know, or, or I should say the, the fitness space that try to learn internet marketing, a lot of them learn it to, you know, be able to sell more and, you know, make more money. But it seems more like people like you and me 
our uh, our passion is to leverage our uh, our newly found skills in internet marketing just to reach more people, to spread the word, to spread the truth, and and get people better results. Is that would that sound about pretty uh, pretty accurate? That's the thing. It really is because I mean, realistically, I, I was you know paying my bills with internet marketing, doing other things, you know, for the last almost ten years now. So I didn't really need to make money spreading the health. That was just something that I was truly passionate about, and I feel that we all have an obligation uh, to each other at some level, you know, because we all have an effect on each other at some level, either directly or indirectly, and that's that's part of being, you know, connected and stuck on the same floating rock in the middle of darkness. You know what I mean? It's it's a uh, it definitely, uh, I think it's really, really important to. I mean, if you if you really have a good message to get out there, and you, you feel like your information is 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 well researched, and you, you trust it with your, you know, your whole being, and and you put the effort into to find out, you know, what's bullshit, and what's not. I think it's important for you, and you're obligated to get that information out there. So then you really do need to start focusing on the internet marketing. Yeah, you know, you're gonna make money, and people are like, oh, well, you're just trying to make money. Okay, well, check it out. I'm not going to be able to get this information out to you. I'm not going to be able to share this information with the world unless I make a little bit of money. It does not happen for free. You know, you got to pay for hosting. You got to pay for designs because, you know, I can have the best info in the world. And, and while many people are going to tell you, oh, if your content's great, you're going to get traffic. But that's just not how it works on the internet. Um, you really got people judge a book by its cover, uh, just like they do in real life when you, when you meet somebody for the first time. A lot of times, you know, they say, what is it? They say a girl or a guy, you know, somebody of the opposite sex will know if they're willing, you know, to even, you know, humor you as a mate within like eight seconds or something like that. And it's the same thing with the internet. It's like you have seven seconds to really impress somebody. Um, if they don't like your content, they don't like your site, they don't like the fonts you use in your header, they're gone. And it's really, really important to recognize these things because something as small as, as simple as the color on your website can make somebody leave. And perhaps that somebody really, really needed to see that last blog post you just put, it could have changed their lives. But because your site was so damn ugly, they didn't even give it a chance. So I think it's really, really important for people like you and I to, to focus on our marketing and our, and our web development and our design. Um, because if our message is really good, then you know what? The site that is delivering that message needs to look good as well and it needs to match it. And I think that uh, that's all part of holding ourselves to a higher standard of being. And it, it, it ties into the businesses. It ties into relationships with other people. It ties into the internet marketing. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, really, if you guys are out there listening to this and you think you have some great information that you want to share with the world, get it out there. We need it. I want to hear it. I want to see it. Tell me about it. But if your site's ugly and it, it's hard for me to read and it's cluttered, that's going to stress me out. And I'm not going to sit on your website. And I'm not going to sift through all that just to try to get, you know, the gold nugget that's hidden in the mud. I'm sorry. There's other easier ways for me to attain that. And, and other people know that as well. So really, if you guys are listening to this, uh, it's, it's definitely important to focus on your marketing and get it out there. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel like you're, you're conning people because you shouldn't be. If you're delivering value, you, you know, you're, you're providing a service and people are more than happy to pay you for that. If you give them, something people are inherently good and want to give and they, they will give back so constantly deliver um with your information and if you want to make this a career and, and you want to make this something that you can you know focus on and, and really continue to research and evolve then, then you're going to want to focus on your marketing and make sure it all looks good and that you're you're delivering in every single aspect uh of the health the fitness and the business what would you say the main differences are between you know the the people who are successful and the people who aren't successful in terms of like, you know, people who go to the gym, not, not, not trainers or that sort of thing. So you're talking about as, as far as like health success, like, yeah, like exactly. Maintain people who like achieve, you know, what's the main, main difference between those who achieve their goals and those that don't. It's self-discipline and it's, and it's what it comes down to is the consistency. You set yourself a goal, you know, what needs to happen. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to, to get up, you know, or if you're going to the gym early in the morning before work, you know, the first day that you start doing this, sure, you did it. Maybe the second day you did it. But that third day, you're really sore. Are you going to get up and go to the gym or are you going to push it off until tomorrow? A lot of people will push it off to tomorrow and then tomorrow doesn't come until two weeks later. Okay, that's not consistency and that's sure as hell isn't self-discipline. You want to see a change in your life. You need to be that change in your life. And for a lot of people, it's as simple as remaining consistent with something uh, and not getting scatterbrained or distracted. And I think I think – Really, it really just simply comes down to consistency. If you guys can remain consistent, if I can remain consistent, I can accomplish great things. And I know that the same can be said for pretty much everybody. Awesome. That's great advice. What, what would you say, you know, some closing thoughts and, and last pieces of advice are to the audience? Well, I mean, here's the thing. 
Breathe deep, drink plenty of water, and smile. If you're constantly breathing deep, you're activating your parasympathetic nervous system. You're always going to be in a state of recovery, so to speak, because a lot of us are shallow breathers just by default. You know, we're stressed out, we're irritated, we're driving around all the time, we're, you know, we're in traffic, it's hot, we're worrying about the bills. So a lot of us are shallow breathers. And when you're a shallow breather, you're activating your sympathetic nervous system, which is your flight or flight which controls your flight or flight. So, you know, you're going to be releasing a lot of the stress hormones like cortisol. And that, that in itself is going to affect the way that you look at life, the way you see relationships, the way you see yourself going to the gym. It's, it'll affect your consistency. Um, it affects your health, your fitness. It's, it's just really important to recognize even the small things, something as little as just breathing. Like even during this conversation, for a lot of it, I've been breathing shallowly and I recognize that. So like right now, it's as simple as that. You take a deep breath and you just kind of reset yourself. Really and uh, I feel better already. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's as simple as that. It's, it, it works, man. And that's, uh, you know, if you can breathe deep and, and, and if you're uh, always smiling and focusing on keeping your pee clear, don't worry about drinking eight cups of water. Don't drink four. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you're peeing clear, you're going to be, you're going to be feeling a lot better than if you weren't And, and hydration is is a huge huge thing uh, especially for americans because most of us are, are habitually and chronically dehydrated and, and you know i'm not going to get into all that right now because i can go on for another hour about that but it, it has a major effect on on more than just your you know <laughs> your body it's uh mm-hmm. it'll affect your relationships it'll it can affect you know your your ability to pay your bills because it's going to affect how you handle yourself in the workplace so really you know start breathing deep drink plenty of water and smile smile as much as you breathe you know i'm not kidding about that if you guys can smile more if i smile more my life is just so much better you know i'm approached a lot more and i'm approached by friendly people when i'm frowning i, I naturally have a serious look on my face and people are always like oh you, you know he's, he's so angry all the time no i'm not angry i'm just ugly people don't realize that so i gotta i gotta i'm not that ugly with smiling you know what i mean and it, it really comes down to those three things i think if you can smile more and you breathe deep and you drink plenty of water you're going to inevitably be getting out more because you're gonna be feeling better so you're gonna be getting more exercise whether you realize it or not and, and you don't even really have to think about it and it doesn't become a task at that point because it's something you look forward to and it's something that you automatically incorporate into your everyday life um but i think that's really important and that that's going to lead to more happiness and, and more consistency doing good things so i mean yeah really really good advice simple you know really straightforward and, uh, and it makes perfect sense you know I, i've heard stuff like this before and the simple stuff is usually what works the best. It is. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. There's yeah. no reason to overcome anything. <laughs> we all, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, man. Just keep it simple. Well, thank but, you, uh, Dave. I really appreciate you being on the uh, on the podcast today, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Yeah, right on, Kush. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys. See ya. 